everyone, and welcome to today's session. My name is Carla Wobilas, and I'll be your moderator. I'm pleased to introduce today's speaker, Lifecycle Experience and Network Experience Solutions Architect, Julio Guerrero. But before I hand over the mic, I do have a few housekeeping items to cover about today's presentation. Today's session will be recorded and made available on demand after the live session. We will make sure to provide you with some details at the end. Also, we'd love to hear from you during today's presentation. So if you have a, uh, or if you are on WebEx and have a question for our speaker, please feel free to send it through the WebEx question and answer panel, uh, where our wonderful panelists are ready to respond. Um, for those tuning into our live stream, thank you very much for joining in as well. Q&A is limited to those via WebEx. However, we will have a post webinar event thread over on the Cisco Learning Network community where you can post any follow-up questions you may have. Uh, so without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce you over to Julio. Julio, over to you. Thanks, Carlo. So uh, welcome everyone to our session on Cisco Spaces and how it will help you to get a better and a much nicer workplace. So today we will learn about the Cisco Spaces architecture. We will uh, take a review on the devices that will enable you to use uh, Cisco Spaces. We will also go through the Cisco Spaces apps and uh, how do they will help you to enhance your productivity and safety. And you will be able to understand how the smart workspaces improve the employee experience. Now uh, we'll go to the next slide. And in here, um, let me share my screen quickly. So we can take over from here. Thanks, Carlo. Perfect. On the next slide, we have uh, some questions for you. So you will see the Slido window popping up. Uh, it's a very simple question. We would like to know if you're actively using Cisco Spaces, uh, yes, no, or you will try these soon. So feel free to answer, and then we will start our today discussion. For today, uh, we will review about the Cisco Spaces Solutions Overview. We will take a look on the Cisco Spaces architecture, the Cisco Spaces applications, and we will go through a demo. So let's get started. About the Cisco Spaces Solutions Overview. Uh, you know, um, there is such a blind spot of the physical space that we may notice, right? We have limited visibility for behavior of people and things on our physical spaces. Our goal with the Cisco uh, uh, building these uh, uh, Cisco spaces was to feel that we are calling a blind spot. Uh, it relates a little bit more on the wireless infrastructure. When we do uh, call it a blind spot, it doesn't mean that there is no data in there, right? In fact, is that the data was already there, that we have been collecting that from our wireless infrastructure in the course of its normal operation, but we have not been collecting it and deriving value from it. Now, if you see uh, the focus of the wireless infrastructure for most of the existence has been primarily to get users connected to our networks and the internet, correct? Now, uh, Cisco Spaces, it's a cloud platform that brings together people, things, spaces to make your buildings smarter. So uh, this is the way we're going to be putting everything together to have a better experience for all your end users. So uh, what outcomes does Cisco Spaces do deliver? As you can see, it will help you to go uh, a little bit better on the outcomes of, um, you can see it's gonna be safe, smart, sustainable, and seamless. We're gonna find some really good applications for uh, safety. As you can see, we have real-time accessibility tracking, we have contact tracing, we have location analytics. To make it smarter, we'll be uh, taking a look at the space utilization the occupancy led efficiency to make more sustainable buildings, the energy utilization, and for seamless Wi Fi onboarding, uh, visitor segmentation, and behavior analytics, as you can see here. Now, just give me one second, please. Just one quick second. And let me reshare this quickly back to you in just one second. Sorry about that. And let me know if you can see my screen back again. Looking good. Okay. 
So uh, we were saying there are going to be three different uh, space packages. This is uh, for the licensing. Uh, the Cisco spaces C, Extend, and Act options, as you can see, all of them come on a subscription, uh, generally based on one, three, five, or seven years. We're going to start with the C, right? With this uh, um, license level, you will gain real-time insights into activity on your physical spaces, right? You will have features such as a behavior metric, metrics right now, metrics, camera, impact analysis, location analytics, open roaming, and detect and locate. Then we will move forward over the extent. That way you will be able to enhance a utility on transmitting location data to either partner applications or workflows via data exports or the Fairhouse API. Remember, uh, these uh, uh, extend uh, level of license uh, do also include everything from uh, Spaces C, and it's included on your Catalyst Advantage license, right? So remember, if you already have your Catalyst wireless licensing or your Catalyst 9300, 9400 switches, it will include these spaces extend uh, license. And finally, we have the ACT, right? With the ACT license, you will start utilizing spaces applications and toolkits uh, to analyze all the historical data uh, and the ability, you will have the ability to make informed decisions and respond effectively to real-time monitoring. Also for uh, seamless uh, boarding, you will have uh, CAPI portals, uh, open roaming, location analytics, all the IoT services and Explorer. And then we have some small subset of uh, applications that come together for different use cases. As you can see, we have the smart workspaces apps that are included on this app subscription. Again, the Cisco Spaces uh, Extend comes together with the Spaces Act. If you need some more um, specific uh, options for your licensing, uh, please feel free to contact your Cisco sales representative. There are going to be a few more options, as you can see, for smart venues, for smart operations, or smart work spaces, that they are come behind all the uh, DNA Spaces Act licensing. Either you can go uh, per device, or can you choose unlimited license? Option. Uh, I will share with you some more details about the uh, unlimited uh, options for the spaces. So you can either go for access point or unlimited square license, uh, square feet uh, license. So uh, let's get started a little bit on the Cisco Spaces architecture. And as you can see, Cisco Spaces is a unified cloud platform that aggregates data from the, uh, all the resources that we can see on the left and then the bottom. We also do have uh, big uh, uh, partner applications integrations that we can review later on. And on the demo, I will show you some examples. So this uh, unified cloud platform will aggregate everything, uh, and it will offer toolkits with actionable insights into it. It will be providing you 24-7 uh, support, and Spaces will also address everything related to uh, the BLE, beacon sensors, and tags from the third-party sensors, either wired and wireless. For uh, Cisco Spaces, uh, will help you transform your buildings into intelligent spaces by enabling data-driven decisions and customized solutions. It will be able to connect all these data sources, will add context on offer services to optimize the user behavior, space utilization, safety, and security. Whenever you aim to enhance your operational efficiency, safety, or create a smart venues, Cisco Spaces will help you to move forward. Now. As you can see, uh, everything that you may already have in your network from Cisco Catalyst, Meraki, or WebEx will become a sensor. So Cisco Spaces will add all these capabilities from your Catalyst switches, Meraki, and uh, WebEx infrastructure. And when you enable uh, Cisco Spaces, you will be essentially activating these assets to serve as the sensors. Well, you can see on the list, we have a different type of devices. We can take some examples, such as the Catalyst access points. They will be uh, providing us some very important data for occupancy, for air quality, temperature, humidity, all the environmental uh, um, inputs that we can get from them. In example, the 9166 will be able to get uh, those for you. Uh, the 9100s can act as a BLE gateway. And we do also have our catalyst switches that we can get a use as a wire IoT gateway. And they can also have you measure the occupancy and energy analytics. A couple of other um, 
uh, devices that you can see in here, uh, the Meraki access points, and also the cameras and sensors can help you get through people count, all the environmental inputs, and also noise levels. Some of the WebEx devices uh, have the uh, similar capabilities as you can see in here. And finally, we have the wire and, uh, wireless third-party sensors that can help you measure all the occupancy and environmental uh, stats as well. So uh, the question is, how do I connect my network into Cisco spaces? Well, uh, you can see that we can uh, achieve some compatibility and interoperability among uh, Cisco hardware including uh, AOS, Catalyst Wireless Line Controllers 9800, the Catalyst Access Points, Meraki devices. And we offer uh, at least four methods that you can see in here. Starting from the left, we can have a direct connection where you can establish a direct connectivity between your AOS or Wireless Line Controller to Cisco Spaces. This is suitable for smaller deployments or when you're just testing Cisco Spaces, that will be a start point for you. We can also use a CMX. So CMX can use tethering uh, with your existing CMX appliance uh, to stream uh, all that data into the spaces. Uh, now, remember, this is an on-prem appliance for CMX. Uh, however, and as you know, Cisco Spaces is replacing uh, CMX as a location-based uh, solution from Cisco. So uh, we would recommend to go over the next few options. We have the Cisco Spaces connector that can uh, get your connectivity uh, from your network devices into the Spaces Cloud, and also the Meraki Cloud, where if you're using uh, Meraki devices, you can get them through the Meraki Cloud. So these two last options will continue to have uh, support and enhancements, so it should be the best options for you to connect uh, both. Now, if we dive down a little bit on what each of these two offers, uh, the connector, as we mentioned, is the preferred method of connecting to Cisco Spaces. As you can see, it will offer you high availability. It can support multiple wireless line controllers up to 16. Uh, this uh, connector can be deployed in a form of a VM. Uh, you can get the OBA file. This is uh, free of charge. Uh, whenever you have your uh, Cisco Spaces account and you deploy the connector, it will give you the link where you can download uh, the Spaces Connector, either version 2.3, and then we'll review a little bit on what is on 3.0. So the connector, uh, it's available on three different scales. As you can see, we have uh, the standard, advanced, and advanced 2 that will ask you when you're deploying the OVA for which of these flavors you want to install on your um, uh, virtualized environment. Uh, for maximum flexibility, you can uh, have uh, multiple standard connector OVAs managing your Spaces integration. So uh, the Spaces Connector uh, number three, uh, sorry, version number three, uh, it's also uh, very uh, recommended to all type of uh, deployments to also support uh, high availability as a, a really good and user-friendly management for services within the your operational environment. Uh, but it's, uh, there are some of the features that they are not uh, fully integrated on version three, such as the dual interface configurations that are uh, IoT services or up and running. If you still need them, you can use a 2.3 connector. So um, as for now, this uh, uh, version 3 connector can be deployed as an OVA file. It's no cost. Uh, it's important to take a look on the uh, uh, future releases for the Spaces connector so we can integrate all the features on the newer releases. Uh, and again, as you can see, the connectivity comes from your uh, wireless line controllers, either AOS or Calis, into the Cisco Spaces connector. And from there, we will have a secure channel connectivity to Cisco Spaces. Uh, about the Meraki integration for Meraki-based deployments, uh, that should be the best option for uh, Meraki. Uh, this will uh, set up integration and ensure that the Meraki account, you need to ensure that the Meraki account has been uh, done, the service account and the scanning API enabled. So there are two different options for you to connect either the API or Meraki logging. And then you can see the list of features, not all the features that we have uh, on uh, the Spaces Connector and uh, uh, Catalyst wireless line controllers are the same as Meraki. Some of the Spaces apps are supported on Meraki, some of them are under development, and some of them are not uh, completely uh, developed yet, right? So uh, please keep an eye. We're trying to uh, have a match on all the features uh, for Meraki integration. 
about uh, the Cisco wireless model support, uh, you can take a look in these uh, compatibility matrix. You can see that we do support Catalyst 9800s. We support uh, support the embedded wireless LAN controllers for LD access and uh, uh, embedded wireless LAN controller for access points as well for AOS, Mobility Express, and Meraki Bot. Feature support, it's only fully supported on the wireless LAN controllers and embedded wireless LAN controllers on the switches. The imports uh, into system spaces can come either from Prime or Catalyst Center. We will talk about later on on the integration. And let's say for the um, embedded wireless LAN controllers and switches, it only comes from uh, Catalyst Center, right? So you see there is some limit support on the rest of the devices with some exceptions about uh, inter IoT services. And let's say for Meraki and import for maps, there is no support yet for uh, taking that into Cisco spaces. Now, as we um, talk, this is the high level uh, set of uh, workflow. Uh, remember, to get started uh, your journey with Cisco spaces, uh, you can start by uh, activating your account for uh, the license that you get. You can either start your free, free trial and then do integrate your Wi Fi components. Uh, if you are going through the connector that it's a recommended way to connect your infrastructure to Cisco Spaces, that should be one of the uh, steps that you will take when you're integrating. Get your AOS Catalyst uh, wireless LAN controller into Cisco Spaces uh, or integrate with Meraki. When you are building up your hierarchy, you can do import of the Wi-Fi maps or uh, you can also integrate that with your Catalyst Center, as I was mentioned. When you do integrate Catalyst Center with Cisco Spaces, you will be getting all the hierarchy and the maps uh, imported uh, directly from Catalyst Center to Cisco Space. If not, you can need to uh, you will need to organize and fill all the location data and import the Wi-Fi maps. And finally, you will start using uh, Cisco Spaces applications, so you will be able to define rules and power them and uh, to start using the applications. Talking about uh, Cisco Spaces and Catalyst Center integration, as you can see, Cisco Spaces offers you a seamless integration with Catalyst Center. Uh, so you will be able to get an easy monitoring of the Catalyst Center sites within the Cisco Spaces platform. So the faster Cisco Spaces onboarding, uh, we're talking about here by integrating the Catalyst Center uh, into Cisco Spaces can automatically import all the maps and hierarchies as we were mentioning before. This uh, eliminates the need to manually configure everything on Cisco Spaces and will uh, help you to save a lot of time. About uh, ease of troubleshooting, Cisco Spaces can get all the data from the wireless devices uh, locations um, from their data um, DNA center. So this data can be used to troubleshoot wireless uh, network devices. Uh, you can see that um, whenever you are using uh, Catalyst Center, you will get really good insights or about uh, either wired and wireless assurance, and you will be able to troubleshoot your network easily with the help of uh, Catalyst Center. Now, talking about the lower TCO by integrating uh, Catalyst Center and Cisco Spaces eliminates the need for getting an extra CMX box, right? So you will be able to save money with this integration. And again, this is gonna be like a single source of true where Cisco Spaces and Meraki will share uh, all the maps and hierarchies. You don't need to uh, double efforts and you will have uh, everything synced together. Uh, talking about the simplification, again, by integrating uh, the DNA center with Cisco Spaces, uh, you can implement all the use cases uh, such as the asset tracking management. And for example, uh, Cisco Spaces will help you track location assets with the uh, VLE tags and so on. And overall, this integration will uh, take a lot of uh, benefits for you, including the fast onboarding, uh, ease of troubleshooting, and everything that we talk uh, right now. Now, uh, let's take a look on Cisco Spaces applications. Now, uh, we will see how these applications will enhance your employee experience, safety, and productivity. Let's take a, a, a look on what is Cisco Spaces for workspaces. You can see there are three pillars as we can uh, see listed in here, the employee productivity, experience and safety, and workspace utilization. So uh, Cisco Spaces will address these challenges by providing insights into the behavior of people and locations, and also the assets that we have in here. So uh, by fostering the employee productivity, enhancing experience, and optimizing workspace use, 
will you be able to get uh, promoted safety on your environment? Talking about uh, space occupancy and utilization, you will be able to gather information in real time about uh, historical metrics for your building, floors, room, uh, so you can empower the space optimization and then you can help support your facility service and elevate the employee experience. About the environmental and energy monitoring, you can also track how is everything around your buildings. Talking about indoor air quality, the CO2, temperature, humidity, and noise, and also energy will create a safer and more sustainable workplaces for you. And then we have the, um, um, <clears throat> the way that we can get some uh, effortless navigation. Whenever we see the workspace utilization, and we will see that on the demo, you will be able to track a space utilization and occupancy, and you will also will be able to get your uh, employees a better experience by uh, learning which of the rooms are available, which is the best option they can get for a room, uh, depending on the amount of people they want to gather on the meeting, et cetera. So let's get started with some of these um, applications. The first one that I want to talk about and makes uh, sense in today's topic is the Right Now app plus the density rules, right? These real-time occupancy um, and a capacity alert that you can get from uh, Cisco Spaces, as you can see, we will be able to track how many visitors are present, uh, the visitor comparison uh, between which type of uh, visitors you're getting, either the employee, guests, and so on. You will be able to get all the information on how much people is in, in your uh, locations. And then we can define some density rules, right? Whenever you are working with the Right Now app, you can create the density rules to say, okay, for this specific location, this specific floor, I want to keep that uh, simple. And I want to say, okay, uh, this is, it's up for maybe 100 or 200 uh, employees that we can receive and guess uh, if, if these um, thresholds are met, you can create on your alerts uh, some um, messages that you can get either by WebEx Teams, SMS, email. And then if you know the value derivative from here, you will prevent uh, overcrowded offices. You can dynamically adjust either the heating, ventilation, and lighting. And then you will be able to create uh, some target cleaning static based on the use of each of your locations. So, it will also help you do a really good occupancy planning and capacity reporting. Going next, uh, the next app that we have uh, will be helpful. It's going to be the location analytics. So uh, the location analytics app uh, will help you to get some reporting tools. Uh, the, on these reports, you can get really good information about uh, how does the um, users having uh, getting into uh, uh, your locations, right? So we'll provide various aspects of including the visit numbers, the visit counts, the average dwell times. That means how much time does the employee or guest spend on your location and the office. And it will break you down on every single location information for this. So this is a very good uh, um, tool where you can track the number of persons that are visiting your office and how much time do they spend in there. Again, you can filter that by uh, SSID time range or the data range on the different locations that you can have on your organization. Another good one to keep safety on your office is the proximity reporting. Uh, so. Uh, there is a really good example in here whenever uh, we need to respond to an incident report. Let's say someone uh, was uh, test uh, positive for COVID and we need to track uh, that there is no need for any mobile app or additional hardware on your users. It will be uh, tracking on some of the devices they will, are using already, right? So we will be able to determine the locations where these individuals have been present, how much time did they spend, and how was the interaction in between this uh, user and the other users that were on the same environment, right? With this, we can also do have integrations with ServiceNow and create a really good workflow to uh, send cleaning or do uh, send employee notifications. Uh, this will be very uh, useful to ensure safety and uh, keep a uh, focus cleaning and sanitation for uh, your location and your uh, environment. 
Then we have uh, the behavior metrics one that is a very interesting one. Uh, this is designed to provide insights and analytics how people and devices behave on these physical spaces that we're tracking. It will help you to capture and analyze data related on the movements, interactions, and pattern behavior between these individuals and objects on the specific locations that we do track. It will get you to get really good uh, data collections uh, from your Wi-Fi access points, uh, Bluetooth beacons, sensors, and other connected devices that we have in here. So you can learn how was the occupancy on your location, how it was across all the other locations, what was the density of people across all the floors that you have, and the daily occupancy trends. We will uh, take a look on more detail on our demo. And again, the value that we can get from here is to evaluate and optimize the right size of spaces, have more effective space planning, and understand what are the trends for our employees on which time they're getting in, which is the most busy day of the week, and how are the trends are moving around your organization and all the specific sites that you are tracking. Now, um, a really good uh, one and uh, one of the newer apps that we have is the Space Manager app, right? We will be able to track real-time occupancy, have a, a really good view of the heat maps about uh, occupation, and real-time insights about the ambient uh, insights, right? Then we will also have a look on the meeting group occupancy. So for space utilization, this app will allow the, your organizations to monitor and optimize the way the physical spaces are used. It will provide insights about how spaces and uh, the rooms are being used, if they are free, they are not, they are booked, uh, which is the um, um, occupancy of those. You can also take a look on the asset management whenever you want to track some of your assets. Uh, we'll cover that a little bit later on and have a really good interactive uh, way for people to find uh, rooms on your uh, building. So these interactive floor maps will come from a rich uh, map that we will see in the next slide. And then from here, you can uh, get a really good insight of how people is using the spaces. Uh, and then you will be able to see some extra features such as uh, um, uh, maze map integration for indoor navigation. So as we were saying, there is going to be a way that system spaces can uh, get you this uh, very good way of city maps. If you are working already with a Catalyst Center or a Cisco DNA Center, you know, we can have our network maps. We can place our, our access point and devices in here. We have a facility map. We can see, okay, well, this is where all the uh, rooms, stairs, elevators, uh, cafeteria and everything is placed, right? But whenever we do have our system spaces uh, with uh, our, a good map, uh, it requires to be an AutoCAD uh, map. If you will be able to create uh, this type of a view of your uh, floors and buildings, we'll review that in the demo in a bit. So. Whenever you are, uh, you already have these smart workspaces enabled, you have your rich maps, you will be able to get uh, really good um, features from here. Uh, first, the room, room finder, where you, you will be able to have a space reservation. So your users will be able to book and reserve spaces whenever they do search quickly, they can uh, go directly into um, either it's a web export, you can get it on your mobile to find out for the capacity and the time that you need the devices if you want a telepresence device or not. So with the help of the uh, Cisco spaces, you will uh, configure everything and set up uh, all the devices that you have on each floor and make sure that uh, they are in the correct place and your um, employees will be able to get a lot of help from that. So um, when we were talking about the indoor navigation, uh, the wayfinding in some cases with the help of these rich maps will offer you all these wayfinding capabilities. So users can navigate through your space and locate a specific room or areas. So they will uh, spend less time trying to search for a room with the help of the uh, uh, room finder, and then they will be able to get quicker with the uh, internet navigation. As you can see, uh, they can get in through the uh, the app on these uh, on the mobile phone, and the the integration between the Cisco Spaces and Maze Map will help you find the rooms very very easy. Now let's move to poll number two. 
And I would like to know if you're already using Cisco Spaces, which are the most common uh, applications or features that you're currently using, either if you're doing already uh, tracking uh, on the behavior metrics, location analytics right now, or smart workspaces, or you have already done the Catalyst Center integration, or you're using any of the partner applications that we have seen uh, already, such as Maze Maps. Okay, let's move next, and we will start a demo, okay? Just let me share my screen back again. One second, guys. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, post them on the Q&A panel. Uh, our panelists will be uh, happy to answer you. And we will be uh, tracking them as well later on on the uh, CISC community, okay? So let me log in back. Timed out. We're almost there. Hang on. Okay. Let's go back to my screen. Now, if you can see, uh, you can log in into DNS Spaces IO. I already log in. It will be, uh, be asking me to choose one of my uh, customer accounts that I have in here. I will choose one that uh, it's integrated already with a smart workspaces. And as you can see here, is the Cisco Spaces dashboard. You can see all the digitation stats, how many locations you are tracking, number of access points that you have on your network, uh, the number of uh, location updates that you're receiving, all the messages you're getting total on the Cisco Spaces from these monitored um, uh, um, buildings and the square foot that we're covering for all the locations. Uh, then we have the number of visits that we have uh, on all the locations as well. You can filter down and we will see some of the apps that we have uh, in here. First of all, the, from the dashboard, we can see that we have our C apps. We have mentioned a few of them today, but there are so many others uh, that are applicable to some uh, other use cases as well. We have the behavior metrics right now location analytics, uh, some other interesting ones. We have a camera metrics, open roaming, uh, so you can keep uh, um, the connectivity from your users on uh, your uh, offices, the technical locates for asset tracking, uh, impact analysis, proximity reporting that we review as well, the space manager that uh, will help you to work a little bit uh, uh, in more detail with your rich maps and uh, smart workspaces. Uh, space experience. Uh, for smart ops, we have the Asset Locator IoT Explorer. Again, this will be very helpful whenever you need to track some of your assets. It will help you to get a very detailed uh, way to find them. And for smart venues, we have uh, all the set of apps, our captive portals, uh, engagements, and location personas. Uh, probably in a future uh, session, we can cover some of either the smart venues and the rest of the applications for you. And then we have the IoT device marketplace. If you are in need to get any of our IoT devices extra for your network, you can get into the uh, marketplace and you can visit that from here. You will be able to choose your industry, let's say for workspaces, I want to select this use case. And I want to have maybe some uh, IoT devices for space occupancy. I will be able to take a look on which type of uh, sensors uh, I can get from these marketplace, right? So this is embedded with the same uh, GUI that I was uh, showing to you. And then we will talk a little bit on the integration for um, Catalyst Center. After that, we will come back and review each of the applications. So uh, I will share you quickly and um, uh, one of the other demos that I have. Whenever you go into your spaces uh, dashboard, you can click on integrations then uh, DNA Center. You will be creating an instance for um, the DNA center that you want to integrate with. You can uh, monitor uh, um, uh, several networks, as we mentioned, from the same Cisco Space account. And you will create a token that's called webinar here. We will be creating a token 
it will be listed in here. You can copy that. And then you can log in into your Catalyst Center. I have one in here already. And it will uh, be able to get that token. So if we go to System Settings and then we go down here to CMX Servers, Cisco Spaces, uh, you will be able to get the token in. In my case, I already have activated that one. You can either reactivate and paste the token here or deactivate and add a new one. That depends. In this case, uh, Spaces is already integrated with uh, Catalyst Center. So I will be able to grab my hierarchy and grab the maps from here and they will be imported into my Cisco Spaces. Uh, how do you check if they have been uh, set up correctly? You can see the settings in here, and if you go wireless, you will be able to find, if you go to one of the specific sites, you will be able to see Cisco Spaces, CMX servers, the demo account that I'm using, it will be part of my wireless infrastructure. If I take a look quickly in here on my network hierarchy, I have for uh, United States, I have a uh, North Carolina, I have two buildings, RTP, uh, uh, building one, building two. So if I come back here, sorry, if I come back here, uh, you will be able to set up your wireless networks uh, from here. Remember, we were talking about uh, integration between um, Cisco Spaces using either CMX tethering, Spaces connectors, or the direct connect. In our case, you can take a look uh, whenever you do want to set up uh, Cisco Spaces. First, you need your account. You log in here. Then you download the Cisco Spaces connector will take you to software.cisco.com and you will be able to see the latest version that we have for spaces and the 2.34 version. So we have a connector version number three and connection number two. After that, you will be able to build up your LVA on your um, uh, virtualized environment. You will be uh, giving it an IP address. And then you can create a new connector, right? Whenever you create a new connector, you can set up, okay, this is going to be for a webinar. And then we'll select either a version 2.x or version 3. It will give you some insights of what is supported or not. Whenever you complete configurations for it, uh, you will be able uh, to review what do they have. So it will ask you, oh, get back here. So whenever you uh, click on connectors, you can verify, uh, okay, this is connector I already had. It's active, it has an IP address, the OBA file that I use. Uh, everything looks good here. So after that, you will be able to go back into your wireless network and you can add also your wireless LAN controllers from here. So um, the integration, as you can see, it's very easy. You will be able to verify the hierarchy as we mentioned. I already import my two buildings that I had uh, from my uh, cattle center into Cisco Spaces. You can review that uh, this is uh, one of my locations, if this is the address. Either you can uh, set a cubicle limit in here, you can edit that, and uh, the number of people that is the maximum capacity for each location, and the maps as well. We will use uh, the, uh, one of the, my other demos to review that uh, from here. So, um, if you want to ask the rich maps, um, you can take it from here. It will give you the two buildings that I already have with the floors that they do uh, belong with. And whenever you need to add a CAD file, you can go to rich maps and select the building with confirm the address. And after that, you can upload uh, the CAD file. So um, you can get it from here. You will get your tour downloads and then you can uh, import that. It will take some time, but I will show you how it is really good and handy after you get it. For the map service, you can also take a look on what has been imported. So if I go to my campus, I see they have two buildings uh, with specific floors in them. So the maps that I had on uh, Cattle Center, they have been imported now into my uh, DNA spaces. So uh, let's get back uh, to the other demo, and we will start with the apps overview. Uh, this is the right now um, application. As you can see, it gives you the exact uh, time that we have <clears throat> and uh, how is the allocation of visitors 
parasites. We have, uh, in this case, I'm using a uh, near CD Pen one uh, office. So you will see the number of visitors that I have right now is 198 for Wi-Fi devices. Historical has been uh, over the uh, last uh, few weeks or over the year. Uh, it will give you the moment, uh, the details here. So visitor comparison, uh, composition, sorry, I will tell you, okay, 87% um, are employees, 26%, uh, sorry, 87% employees, 13% guests, and also which of the um, SSIDs that we have in that office they are using either Blizzard or internet. We'll see also the uh, visitor present on all locations, how historically have been uh, moving up in this specific uh, demo, I only have this office for uh, New York City, so you can see uh, during the morning, it's picking up for uh, uh, the top of uh, visitors, it may go down later on, right? So for the uh, map view, you can take a look on which is our, our location. As we were saying about uh, the density rules, we can create a new one, and let me go back here. So I can show you what can you get on the density rules. Whenever you create a new rule, uh, you will be able to close webinar too. It will ask, okay, what do you want to sense? If you want to attract devices that are connected to Wi-Fi or people seen on camera, we can choose, okay, if it's going to be density count of occupancy, how many devices I want to track, if it's more or less than down in between numbers. So you, you can play with this uh, numbers and choose if you want to keep that on a floor level. If it's more like, let's say, uh, 50 over uh, any floor, it will ask me to add the locations. You will be able to set a scale and set a date, arrange for it, these rules, and then you can take actions. You can send a message to you uh, once in every, let's say, 15 minutes, hours, days, weeks, or months, and then you can select the way you're going to be getting these alerts either by Cisco, WebEx, SMS, email, or any of it that you can get together, right? So let's go back to right now. Um, and again, it will give you really good insights of what is happening on your network at this specific moment. Going back to the main screen, we will go over location analytics. So it will help you to get uh, really good information about your visitors, how many of your visitors are new or they're coming back as repeated visitors, the total number of visits that you can uh, you had all over the time. You can see the time frame in between February and November 2023. You can select the uh, dates and you can customize either from today, previous week, uh, previous month or current month or custom as we can see if there's are specific dates being given, or you can filter also by locations. Again, in my case, I only have a one for a uh, pen one location in New York City. And as well, uh, time. How much time does my uh, user have been uh, spent on the office, correct? You can see the visitor trends, how many visitors I had over the time in the last few months, and the visits trends, uh, how many visits per visitor has been happening during this time. The, to check about the dual distribution, you can see people spend between five or 30 minutes is very low. People tend to spend between uh, more than eight hours, 24%, or between seven, eight hours, 40%, and so on. So you can see really good insights, and you also can create reports from here to get better understanding on how location analytics uh, do happen on your network. So let's get take a look on this one. And again, this is specific for uh, between August 21 and 27 for a week. So you can uh, take a look better of how was the dual time distribution and what is the comparison in between uh, the uh, dates that you are getting in, in these kind of reports. Now, uh, moving next, uh, we will take on the proximity reporting. And for here, I will just create a sample report. You can see the sample report, we will be able to track devices uh, or specific devices for a person that we have been uh, getting a notification, maybe they got, uh, as we were taking an example of COVID, we will get a report in the same building to take a look on which of these, uh, of these um, uh, persons have been in contact with this device 
So you can take a look on the total time spent during this time frame. As you can see, from November to December, he spent a total of eight hours, 19 minutes in here in between uh, home floor or these other zones that we have marking here. And then we can see, okay, interactions that came uh, closer than 10 meters for more than four hours. It was maybe one of our sensors that we have an RFID sensor in here. But then we can see maybe with some other clients, they had contacts within less than, uh, within 10 meters and less than four hours, and then we can uh, notify them if needed. So that's also a very useful uh, app that will help you track safety on your workspaces. And uh, we do um, mention behavior metrics on our presentation. Again, you will be able to filter this by location or uh, monthly. You can monthly you can get monthly reports, and this is very very useful information. You can take a look on which is the workday duration across locations, how much time does your employees uh, spend on each location. This is from your specific locations, from all locations on your organization. Again, I only have one in this uh, setup. And based on the industry average, you can take a look at how much, uh, how much time has been spent by people on uh, all the locations. Then the frequency of visits, as you can see as, uh, from the industry, 6.5 visits a month. It's kind of average for our uh, office, 2.7. It's kind of average monthly base. And then we have the workday duration distribution between which hours uh, uh, we have in here at the time that it has been spent by uh, the employees and their workplace. So you can see the duration in between six to eight hours is about 31% of our employees. And we spend this amount of time, eight to 10 hours, 25%. And you can see some people do only go for one, two hours. Uh, just say hi. So you can also take a look at the uh, employee frequency distribution in here, the number of visits that we have. So most of the employees go once a month. We can see that it comes uh, twice, three times a month, four, five, uh, the percent of uh, employees that are coming and uh, are, are returning to the office uh, monthly base comes up to six visits a month. And then we can have a uh, the average can goes up to more than 12 visits a month, about 17% of all the uh, industry, uh, they do go to the office. And the density across locations, we can review here the monthly uh, man hour per 1,000 square meters, and you can see 208 hours are uh, being spent on these areas specifically. And then we go a little bit down to the diagnostics. So, we can take a look at uh, entry time across locations. So entry time between uh, 10 to 4 hours in the morning and the exit time about 4 or 6 uh, p.m. So and then we have the entry time distribution. As you can see, some of the uh, morning uh, entries in the office, the entry distribution from 6 to 8 a.m. comes 40 percent. People that comes in between eight to 10 are the most at 40% and so on. You can see uh, always the comparison between the industry average. I think uh, this is uh, very, very close to industry. That's good. And the exit time that we can see here, most of the people go out between four and 6 p.m. Now the presence uh, time by hour of the day, as you can see that we have some peak hours that can help you again with uh, capacity planning, planning, and so on. You can see some of the peak hours that we can see 2 p.m. is uh, the top of the peak hours when we have most of our employees at the office. And then for guests, we have similar hour of the day. They come between 9 a.m. to uh, noon. So that's the presence of guests we're tracking as well. For employee presence, we can have um, the day of the week. We can see from Monday to Friday, we have a good percentage. Either on the weekends, we still have very low and for guests as well. So we don't have many people visiting us uh, over the weekends. Let me take back here. And finally, I'll show you um, the Space Manager that it comes along with these, um, go here, uh, the workspaces that you can see. This is one of my enhanced rich maps that we have on the San Francisco office. 
but let me take you to the main uh, building view. So uh, in here, you can see the full occupancy for the building. It's marked as low. We can take a look at how does the indoor air quality is going. Uh, when I reviewed earlier today, it was uh, a little bit on the orange side. So part of ventilation that we need to work in AC and everything. Uh, you can take a look on how does the indoor air quality is. Uh, CO2 quality is good here. Temperature is fine. Humidity is also nice. And then you can take a look on the right now, how much people is there at this moment. So this it goes together with what we can see on the right now app on the Cisco spaces. And we can see, okay, earlier today, how was the occupancy of each of these uh, of the full building. Now, if we go for per building view. Uh, you can take a really good view on where is everything. But for that, I like to take back the New York City office. So let me reset now. And as you can see from here, we have all the available rooms that we have on this specific floor. So ninth floor, uh, one cent station near city. I have uh, 64 available. I have uh, 30. It, this is uh, being updated on real time. And you can see which of those are booked and also occupied. You can see the color uh, scheme that we have on green, uh, brown, and red whenever uh, they are occupied or not. When one of the rooms is occupied, you can see the agenda how long has been booked, how is the insights for environmental uh, um, quality, let's say for room air quality is good, temperature, humidity, and the noise, it's very nice. So it's quiet, it's good. Now, whenever uh, one of your employees uh, wants to take a look on this, they will be able to take a look maybe on their own WebEx board and they can find, okay, I'm here already, but I need a room, let's say within uh, 60 minutes or more, for um, let's say five persons. So it will give me a list of the available rooms that I have right now. So I can click on this room. It will tell me, okay, this is the high bridge. It's available, it's booked later on. It has a occupancy up to five. It has uh, all the uh, environmental um, uh, statistics are good for me as well. So I can hold room and I can go from my locations where I'm searching for these rooms to the room itself and then it will be uh, blocked, right? So whenever I'm here, this is uh, where I am. I mean, need to take a walk. And this is where the wayfinding and uh, waste maps integrations comes to play. So uh, with all these, uh, you will enhance your user experience and productivity, as well as you can get a better, better safety measures on your environment. So let me take back here and I will reshare our presentation. So a couple of uh, key points to remember. Uh, all of these set of uh, Cisco Spaces apps will offer valuable insights into user behavior, real-time locations, analytics, and enhanced safety measures for your workspaces. Then we will be able to optimize the space utilization and occupancy monitoring in real time with all these uh, health of, uh, density tracking to ensure compliance and safety protocols. Uh, Cisco Spaces will also empower uh, uh, facility teams with operational efficiency tools to monitor everything on the environment, conditions, and manage assets effectively. And finally, to leverage Cisco Spaces app to create a hybrid work uh, workplace uh, will help you to enhance and prioritize your employee's safety, productivity, and overall workplace experience. Uh, we will share with you a list of resources. Uh, I will paste that in the chat and uh, you will be able to get that on uh, our uh, post-webinar discussion. So if you have any other questions, uh, you can uh, let us know. Um, we will be happy to help. And then uh, after we finish this, you will receive a survey invite uh, from uh, customer experience. It's going to be very quick and easy, so I hope we can get some uh, feedback from you. Now uh, we're open for questions. Awesome. Thank you very much, Boris. Uh, appreciate the great information through the uh, slides as well as the demo. It was really interesting. So let me actually 
bring up this slide again. So give me one sec. Um, and for those who have a question, please go ahead and use the Q&A panel to submit your questions and we'll get those answered accordingly. So let me get this slide. Um, and as uh, Julio mentioned, I actually went ahead and pasted the resources uh, that he posted, uh, which is on that slide Thank in you. the chat. My pleasure, but we'll get this posted on the post webinar discussion thread as well. So, all right, so let's go look at the questions. Uh, all right, so first question I have here, uh, Julio, is do I need Catalyst Center, Prime Infrastructure, or CMX to use Cisco Spaces? Um, not really. As we mentioned, the integration with Catalyst Center is very helpful, but the only hardware you require to start using Spaces will be either AOS, uh, Watson Controller, Catalyst Wireless and Controller, Meraki or WebEx infrastructure that's built with come all together uh, by uh, with Cisco Spaces. Awesome, thank you very much. Next question I have here is: Can I use any model of sensor to gather data? Um, no, as uh, we showcase uh, today, there is a specific list of IoT supported devices we have on our uh, marketplace. So there is only a set of compatible list of sensors. Uh, if it can include the Catalyst, Meraki, WebEx, or even all the IP sensors that we can find in the marketplace. Thank you. Okay. Next question I have here is the. Or do I have to use a CAD file for the rich map, or can I use a PDF or JPEG? No, uh, you need to use a specific format for a CAD file uh, that includes the layer and everything. Uh, it's a DWG format file from CAD. Uh, the only one that will allow you to get the rich maps on uh, system spaces for workspace. Awesome. Good to know. Good to know. All right. Um, Next question I have here is, is Catalyst Center, also formerly known as Cisco DNA Center, required for Cisco Smart Workspaces? Uh, no, uh, there's um, no requirement, but again, it's a really good uh, integration that you can have between them both. So a Catalyst Center will bring you a lot of uh, really good um, uh, time-saving options whenever you integrate that with uh, Cisco Smart uh, Workspaces as well. Thank you. Okay, um, I do have two other questions. Um, I think we have time to tackle those two questions. Um, and then for this one, Kavita and or Julio, feel free to open up, uh, you know, unmute and, and talk about it. Is, is there a backup feature in the Cisco spaces just in case the data is deleted? Um, uh, well, this uh, cloud service will ensure that everything has a proper high level of and backups. Uh, let me get that back uh, to you, um, and then we can find some specific uh, answers. But uh, yeah, it should be uh, uh, relaying in our high availability, and it should have backups. So don't worry about that. Awesome. And then this one question, last one is: uh, Is there a demo online with demo sites just to show what's possible? Uh, it seems difficult to test in our live environment. Uh, I will come back to you with a specific demo that you can use. Again, you can create your account for free. You can start using Cisco Spaces. Uh, but if you want to take a look on the deeper view, uh, I'll get back to you, Patrick. Awesome. Well, I think that does it for all the questions. Um, let's, let me double check. Um, there was a question about if this session is being recorded. Yes, it is being recorded. Um, because we're live streaming this as well, it will be made available rather um, uh, fairly, or rather uh, immediately, uh, right after we have the session. And let me post to where you can actually view the session uh, as well as continue the conversation. So let me get that posted into the chat. Do bookmark that. Um, I will post these resources that we have in the chat already on there as well. Um, and then if you have any follow-up questions, it's a great place to go ahead and continue the conversation. Okay, well, Julio, I wanna thank you again, and as well as Kavita, Dennis, for uh, jumping on. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say, Julio, before we uh, wrap up? Thanks, Carlo, and thanks everyone for joining. It was a really good session with you guys. Thank you.
All right. Well, thank you again, uh, Julio. Thank you again to the team. Um, if you have a question, I'll keep the Q&A window open for a couple more minutes, as well as please join the post webinar discussion thread. Uh, for even more tutorials, demonstrations, and future webinars, please do visit the Cisco Learning Network. Uh, at this time, your feedback is important, and you'll be directed to a survey, as Julio mentioned earlier. Uh, so we do encourage you to take the time to participate in that. Uh, once again, we thank everyone for joining us today, and we will see you next time. Take care.